officials and across the country, of course, in the wake of this shooting as this investigation continues into what, as you mentioned there, is being called the deadliest attack on law enforcement since September 11. And what started as a largely attended and peaceful demonstration against police brutality ended in gunfire in a busy part of downtown Dallas. Twelve officers were shot, five of them killed, two civilians were also hurt. Now, police initially thought they were dealing with multiple snipers who took to higher ground to pick off these officers, shooting them in the back many times, according to the Dallas police chief. And panicked protesters ran away as officers rushed into this shooting scene during this ongoing gun battle Thursday night. And eventually police cornered their one suspect, Micah Johnson, in a nearby parking garage. After hours of negotiation and gunfire, they used a bomb squad robot to detonate a device which ultimately killed him. And as soon as they could get inside, authorities were searching the gunman's home. Inside, they found an arsenal of bomb-making materials, bulletproof vests, rifles, ammo, and a journal of combat tactics. And before he was killed by that explosive device, police say Micah Johnson told them he was angry about Black Lives Matter and the deaths of black men in police-involved shootings. He reportedly told police he wanted to kill white police officers specifically and claimed he was not affiliated with any particular group. And Johnson was a private first class from Mesquite, which is a neighboring Dallas suburb. And he was an Army reservist for six years and received multiple medals after serving a nine-month tour in Afghanistan. The Dallas police chief and the mayor say despite holding and questioning a couple of suspects, they believe the shooter acted alone. But at the same time, the police chief vowed to exhaust any and all leads to make sure that everyone and anyone who played a part in this shooting was brought to justice. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you the latest from our reporting live here in Livingston, Local 10 News. All right, Laren, thank you. And we now know the identities of those five officers that were killed in Wednesday's shooting rampage. Brent Thompson, Michael Crawl. Patrick Zamirpa, Mike Smith, Lorne Ahrens. Those are the names of the officers killed. Investigators say the officers were patrolling a peaceful protest against the police involved shootings when shots rang out. In the aftermath of that shooting, a memorial is growing outside the headquarters of the Dallas Police Department. And Dallas area rapid transit. Police have been placing flowers on top of two police cars to offer condolences. Meanwhile, the protesters across the country are condemning the violence in Atlanta. The demonstrators blocked a major highway delaying traffic. Ahead at 5.30, we will have more on the nationwide protests as well as local protests scheduled to take place later today. Our coverage of the Dallas police ambush continues. Look for more live reports from Local 10's Andrew Perez live from Dallas all weekend long. A police officer in Georgia is recovering this morning after being shot during an ambush. Authorities say Officer Randall Hancock was responding to a call of a possible car break-in. They say when they got there, when he got there rather, 22-year-old Stephen Paul Beck, who made that fake 911 call, shot Hancock. Hancock fired back. Both men were taken to the hospital. Hancock is in stable condition while Beck is in serious condition. A motive for the shooting is still under investigation. Following the police-involved death of Alton Sterling, the head of the NAACP, flew to Baton Rouge, Louisiana to talk about moving forward. Cornell Brooks energized the crowd of hundreds with talk about stopping police brutality. The national civil rights leader was called in to help lead the rally for justice after the shooting of Sterling. Officials have put up steel barricades around the Baton Rouge police headquarters in anticipation of more protests today. This comes as demonstrators stood outside the building yesterday expressing outrage over this week's officer-involved shootings. There were many protesters. Officials had to shut down the roads. In Minneapolis, we are now learning the names of the officers who performed the tragic stop that ended the fatal shooting of Philando Castile. The two St. Anthony officers involved were Joseph Kauser and Geronimo Yanez. Yanez is the one they say pulled the trigger, opening fire on Castile multiple times, according to the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. Castile's girlfriend captured the aftermath of the shooting on Facebook Live. It hurts me what's going on in Dallas because nobody should have to be taken away from their family. Reynolds says she and Castile were pulled over for a busted taillight. She told reporters that Castile did only what officers asked him to do. The trial continues for the police lieutenant charged in the Freddie Gray case in Baltimore. Lieutenant Brian Rice is the highest ranking of the six officers who were charged in Gray's death. 
He was one of the three bicycle officers who encountered Gray in April of last year, shortly after Gray suffered a fatal spinal cord injury while in police custody. Rice elected for a bench trial, meaning the verdict will be decided by a judge. In Miami, a developing story, a hospital emergency after a false bomb threat. Miami-Dade officers were called to Nicholas Children's Hospital yesterday afternoon, and the hospital had to be evacuated. There were also reports of an active shooter at the hospital, so police kept patients who were in critical condition inside with their doctors while snipers took to the roof. A hospital spokesperson later said there was no shooting, and after several hours, investigators say they did not find any bombs either. As soon as we came out the elevator, we saw the police, and he was like, hey, you know, go this way. Everybody got to go this way. No injuries were reported, and the threat was officially deemed to be a false alarm. Two teens are behind bars after an alleged string of robberies. Police say 19-year-old Henry Rodriguez hid his face behind a bandana as he robbed at least four people on the street at gunpoint. He later then jumped into a getaway car, allegedly driven by 18-year-old Jose Suero. All of the robberies happened between Alton Road and Collins Avenue. The first was reported just after 1.30 in the morning. The last was more than an hour later. A witness tells us he heard the victims screaming for help. There was sugar. One was like falling in the floor, and the other one was like screaming. She was coming from there. Help, help, help. Both teens are charged with armed robbery. Rodriguez is also facing counts of burglary, petty, and grand theft. New this morning, a woman is recovering after she was bitten by an alligator in Seminole County. Fire rescue officials there saying the gator bit the woman in the arm as she was wading in a river. They say she is in stable condition and expected to survive, but look at that gator. A trapper and a Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation officer said they captured the alligator at the scene. One police officer is dead this morning and 25 injured following a grenade attack on a police station in Venezuela. Officials say that two men on a motorcycle threw two grenades at the police as the unit was gathering for their morning training session. One of the two suspects was killed in a battle with police after the attack, while the other is still on the loose. Hundreds of state workers in Rio de Janeiro demanding that authorities pay their salaries on time instead of spending the funds on the Olympic Games. The governor has declared a state of financial disaster there. Public school and university teachers marched this week to demand funding for health and education services. This comes as the country suffers its worst recession in decades and as well as political corruption involving the president. New overnight, hey, we've got a winner. And based on her presence here, it isn't Nikki Mohan. No, it isn't. Someone in Indiana actually hit the jackpot in last night's $540 million Mega Million Lottery. The identity of the winner has yet to be released, however. Lottery officials say that sales leading up to yesterday's drawing actually exceeded expectations. It was the 35th drawing since Mega Millions had a winner, the longest rollover stretch in that game's history. I didn't win $500 million, but maybe I won two. Did you? Know. I have to check. I Did. don't know. Check your numbers, everyone. I don't have time to do that yet. Well, a teenager, this is a wild story. My son plays this game all the time. Yeah. This teenager going on a walk, hoping to catch them all while playing a popular video game. Wow, but instead, she ends up making a deadly discovery. We're going to tell you what she stumbled on next. Also coming up, a plane taking a plunge and ending up in a fiery crash. The cell phone video that captured it all. And for us in South Florida, the steamy weather continues. We're waking up to those low 80s once again this morning. It is a start of what's going to be a sunny and hot weekend. You're watching Local 10 News with Todd Tongan and Nikki Mohan. An investigation underway after a woman in Wyoming found a body by a river while playing that new popular app, Pokemon Go. In the game, players catch creatures in real life places with their phone cameras. So the woman says she decided to go for a walk by the river to try and find a water Pokemon. Instead, she found a body lying face down. I didn't know what to do. I was really scared. So I was like, I should just call 911. And then I called 911 and then they told me to go wait up at the highway for a police officer. Officials say they believe the death was to have been accidental. There was no evidence of foul play at that scene. They are trying to determine that person's identity. Also caught on camera, a plane engulfed in flames after it crashed into a wooded area in Texas 
and four people died. The aircraft was completely destroyed. According to the FAA, the plane had just taken off a few minutes earlier. Investigators believe it suffered some kind of engine failure. An eyewitness says he noticed the plane was having trouble just after taking off. I saw it. I saw it. He went up. He made a left. And he went down. He hit the pine tree. The, the plane pretty much disintegrated. The NTSB and the FAA are now investigating the cause of that crash. Caught on camera, a fire in Northern California, sending a huge plume of black smoke into the sky. That fire started yesterday afternoon at a recycling center. Police say nearby businesses were evacuated as firefighters from multiple departments worked to put out the flames. Officials say that fire is now contained and there were no reports of any injuries. Cleanup is underway in Eureka, Kansas, after a tornado touched down there, damaging homes and businesses. Officials say the tornado ripped through about 50 homes there and businesses, including a local nursing center. Luckily, there have been no reports of any injuries. The National Weather Service says the tornado was an EF3 tornado. That's a strong one, which carries winds of up to 165 miles per hour. A lot of wild weather in that region of the country and even yeah. stretching further east. I talked to my wife yesterday, who's in Tennessee. They had a tornado touchdown nearby their home in yeah. Johnson City. Yeah, that translate over here is to be really hot and sticky. Yes, it does. We did get some thunderstorms yesterday afternoon out west, Jennifer. Yeah, way out west, and uh, but, but the east coast have been so hot, and uh, it's good, I guess. If you want to make it a beach day, you certainly can. Uh, it's going to be dry once again for today for the east coast. Uh, you can't rule out an inland thunderstorm, but most of the storms will definitely be over the Everglades and then towards the west coast of Florida. Meanwhile, temperatures again in those low 80s for the start of our morning hours. The wind is calm in Fort Lauderdale, Miami. A light wind out of the northwest in Homestead at 5 miles per hour out of the east for the Keys. And there have been a few showers developing north of the Keys and they're staying uh, north of the Keys. They're not going to be an impact as they continue to track basically towards the west over the Gulf waters. Nice and dry for us in Broward, Miami-Dade and the rest of the Keys as well. Meanwhile, here's a look nationwide. Uh, you can see this low pressure system spinning right over uh, just the border of Canada and the United States as it continues to bring in rain even into parts of New England. This is the same system with the trailing cold front that has also sparked that severe weather out into Tennessee yesterday and across the central plains as well. Well, now it'll continue to basically move out east. It's not going to pull southward because there's a high that's pretty strong and centered over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So that's going to block from um, the cold fronts heading south. There is a threat of severe weather for the northern plains and then also actually for the northeast and parts of New England as well. And this is again due to the cold front that's passing through most likely though uh, the threat is going to be earlier in the day and that actually includes New Jersey Eastern PA up to upstate New York as well even parts of uh, southern New England could see a few of those strong storms that could definitely cause some travel delays today hot and humid for us here at home mainly dry and morning showers expected for Sunday then again with mainly dry conditions through the afternoon slight rip current risk if you're heading out to the beach today the surf is flat UV index extreme and for boaters no advantage advisories. We have winds today out of the south, southeast, 5 to 10 knots. The seas 1 to 2 feet. The bays with a light shop. And here's a look at the keys. Also, no advisories. Similar forecast. The bays a light shop today as those winds remain out of the east, southeast, 5 to 10 knots. As temperatures continue to rise, we're going to hit those highs in the low 90s. It's a high of 92 for us, hitting that right around 2 p.m. with only a 20% chance for a shower or inland thunderstorm. And then those rain chances start to go up just a little bit tomorrow because of the morning showers. But definitely by next Tuesday, we'll see more rounds of showers and storms. All right, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, father's snooze under his son's crib going viral. Coming up, we're hearing from the dad himself on why he was sleeping on the floor. But first, a live look from our Miami Tower Cam, dark and early above the Magic City. The twinkling lights there. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more news for you. Just ahead. Always watching, always tracking. Meteorologist Jennifer Correa on the one and only Local 10 News, your weather authority.
Happening today, get your flip flops and your bathing suit ready and take your family to Splash Day. It is happening at the Gold Coast Railroad Museum in Miami. Treat your kids to water slides, food, bounce houses, and much more. The event starts at 11 a.m. And, and goes until 4. It is $8 for non-members, $5 for museum members. It is family day at the Aragon at the Coral Gables Art Cinema. The event happens every other weekend and they play classic films for the whole family. Today's movie is Babe, Pig in the City. It's oh. a great flick. It starts at 11 a.m. Tickets are $5 and includes a free popcorn and soda. And that'll do, pig. That'll do. <laughs> you can also spend your Saturday helping our environment by cleaning up a beach. The Hollywood Beach Sweep is cleanup is happening today from 7 until 11. 7 a.m. until 11. Volunteers must be at least eight years old to participate, and you have to register for the cleanup at the at HollywoodFL.org. Make sure you dress appropriately, though. Bring sunscreen and plenty and of a hat. Yeah. You need a hat, too. And uh, for those kids who need volunteer hours, this is a great opportunity. All right, you want to go to the movies today? Always a good time. Now showing in theaters a movie that's expected to dethrone Finding Dory at the box office this weekend. And I've already seen it. It's a really, really funny. Of course the Secret have. Lives of Pets is getting great buzz, and analysts expect an opening weekend of at least $70 million. The forecast isn't as great, though, for Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates, starring Zac Efron and Adam Devine. That'll do better on video, probably. It's expected to debut at only $15 million. A baby elephant is enjoying his new life at the Dallas Zoo. Here he is, enjoying his first dip in a hey now, yeah, in a little a little kids pool. Yeah, his mom was rescued from a drought-stricken Swaziland, and the baby was born at the zoo in May. <laughs> oh, look at that! Zoo officials say that the relocation saved both of those elephants' lives. Now this has gone viral. Have you seen this? I have not. You know, a dad in Pennsylvania <laughs> proving that his job as a father is never done after a picture of him curled up on a hospital floor under his sick son's crib has gone viral. I don't have to see it to at least uh, identify with the guy. This picture is of Andre Palmer and it shows him sound asleep underneath his son's crib. He had just gotten off a nine hour overnight shift and rushed to the hospital to see his son who apparently has very bad asthma. He says when he got there everybody's asleep so why not curl up? I was like you know what they're asleep I'm not gonna ask her to try to move over a little bit. I just woke up and looked and I was like oh my gosh that's a perfect photo. To me it's a picture of me being a father. It certainly is. Andre's wife says that she did not leave him on the floor for too long, though. Their son has since been discharged, and now he's back at home with mom and dad. And when he's a smart aleck teenager, <laughs> he can show him that picture and go, listen, man, I'm your father. I'm I the slept... one that slept under your crib in the hospital when you were sick. That's right. Yeah. And, and a little later in life, you'll yeah. sleep under mine. And he says, it was, <laughs> he says it was just his doing his duty as a dad. And he's yeah. glad that everyone likes it, but that's just who he is. Yeah, fatherhood is tiring. Yeah, still to come this morning, <laughs> folks. After the break, a look at the protests that are continuing around the country in the wake of that deadly day in Dallas. Yeah, we're going to tell you what's being planned locally for today. Plus, an arrest made after a blind woman is groped. We'll have the latest on the disturbing investigation. And if you are planning to make it a beach day, you certainly can. We'll continue with that hot and mainly dry weather, especially right along the East Coast today. Uh, do expect a lot of sunshine, so use that sunscreen, reapply, of course. And the surf is nice and smooth out there. It is flat. Rip current risk is low for today. Also, boaters, no advisories out there. Take Local 10 online with you wherever you're headed. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest social media news and interaction. Local 10 News starts right now. Time now, 5.30, a steamy 82 degrees already. Warm times, middle of summer here in South Florida. Looking out of our Miami Tower, kind of dark and early at the twinkling lights. Well, you tell me, I came back from Montana. And you know the doors at Fort Lauderdale yes. Hollywood International <laughs> open? And it went, <laughs> Welcome home. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you got an instant sauna, right, Jennifer? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, my skin was all dry from being in Montana. Bam, it was like a steam like bath. Like a baby's bottom. That's a thank you. It feels nice and smooth now. <laughs> I know, you really feel the difference when you go someplace in the north. And, and yeah, it gets hot up in the northern plains. It really does. Uh, just a few days ago, temperatures were in the 90s. and uh, But it's a different kind of heat. Of course, here we deal with the humidity almost all the time in South Florida. That's that tropical moisture. Anyways, it is hot or I should say warm this morning, but it will be hot later this afternoon. Temperatures in the low 80s with 
with high humidity. No rain that's impacting land for us and temperatures expected to warm up to the mid 80s by 9 a.m. and then quickly to 90 degrees by at least uh, probably 11 a.m. So it's going to be a rapid warm up. Let's give you a quick look at the tropics and across the Atlantic Ocean. There are uh, two tropical waves, uh, one just south of the Cape Verde Islands, uh, one just to the north of South America, and one that has already crossed over the Lesser Antilles. Not much in moisture with this one, though, but none of these actually showing any signs of formation. So we are good with uh, n uh, not tracking any tropical cyclone development in the next few days. Todd, Nikki. Thanks All right, Jennifer, Jennifer, thank you. A peaceful protest against police brutality ending in what is now known as the deadliest attack on law enforcement since 9-11. Five officers in all killed by a sniper. Around the nation, people uh, are set to protest again today. They took to the streets last night to protest with thousands rallying across the country. This morning, we are beginning to learn more about the heroic officers who lost their lives. After hours long standoff with police, the suspect believed to be behind the shooting spree died and we are learning more about what could have motivated his attack. We begin our team coverage with Local 10 News reporter Laren Livingston. He is in our newsroom this morning with the very latest on the shooting as well as the investigation. Good morning, Laren. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Nikki. A number of people were detained and questioned in the immediate moments following this deadly shooting and police now say the shooter acted alone. But the Dallas police chief, he does say that his department is determined to track down and make sure that any and all leads that have been exhausted are exhausted before they rule that anyone else may have been helping him in this situation if that person or those people are out there somewhere. I pray that these senseless acts are, are stopped. A salute to the five officers <laughs> who ran toward the gunfight in the chaos in downtown Dallas Thursday night. Go! 43-year-old Dallas Transit Officer Brent Thompson was the first name we learned, a newlywed, Sergeant Michael Smith, Officer Patrick Zamarapa, a father and a veteran of three tours in Iraq, Officer Lorne Ahrens, and Officer Michael Kroll, all of them killed after what began as a peaceful protest against police brutality following the police-involved shooting deaths of black men in Louisiana and Minnesota. Police say the Dallas officers were targeted because of the color of their skin and their uniform. He said he was upset about the recent police shootings. The suspect stated he wanted to kill white people, especially white officers. The shooter, 25-year-old Micah Johnson. The former Army reservist had no criminal history, no ties to foreign terror groups. Inside his home, though, an arsenal of bomb-making materials, weapons, and ammo. Authorities say the investigation is just beginning. What we don't know is who, if anybody, uh, may have known what the gunman knew, what he was going to do, uh, may have assisted him. Twelve officers were shot, including the five who were killed. Two civilians were also hurt. Police initially thought they were dealing with multiple snipers who took to higher ground to pick off those police officers, shooting them in the back many times. Panicked protesters ran away as officers rushed to the scene during the ongoing gun battle Thursday night. Eventually, police cornered their one suspect in a nearby parking garage. After hours of negotiation and gunfire, they used a bomb squad robot to deliver and detonate a device which ultimately killed him. And the Dallas police chief says many of the injured officers have since been released from the hospital. Those seven injured officers and the two civilians who were also shot in this gunfire are expected to fully recover. Reporting live, Laren Livingston, Local 10 News. The man who was mistakenly considered a suspect of the Dallas protest shooting is now speaking out. Mark Hughes had a rifle strapped over his shoulder as he marched in the peaceful protest against the police-involved shooting deaths of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile. After shots were fired at Dallas police officers, a picture of Hughes was tweeted out by the Dallas Police Department saying that he was a suspect in the shooting. I think both of us share the same emotion, Don, that we couldn't understand how we went from protesting and trying to give a voice to people that don't have a voice uh, to being sus suspects for uh, domestic terrorism. Not only that, um, two individuals that were assisting with the police, um, helping individuals get to safety, directing traffic, um, being model citizens, and later on to be victimized or criminalized and almost indicted and charged at the same time. 
Texas is an open carry state, by the way. Mark Hughes said once he heard those shots fired, he turned over his rifle to police officers. Hughes was questioned and then released without charge. Even with the tragic shootings in Dallas, members of the Black Lives Matter movement took to the streets again last night to continue their protests. And although they were mostly peaceful, there was still tension in the air. Local 10 News reporter Sanel Sibovic continues our team coverage. She's live in Fort Lauderdale. Good morning, Sanel. Good morning, Nikki and Todd. It's been a week filled with sadness, heartbreak, pain, lots of tragedies, three separate tragedies in just one week alone. And citizens across the country taking to the streets to denounce this latest rash of violence. People across the country making their voices heard after another mass shooting grips the nation. In just one week, three separate tragedies, two officer-involved shootings in Louisiana and Minnesota, and just yesterday, five officers slain in Dallas. When do we want justice? When do we Citizens want taking to the streets across the nation to express their grievances. This was the scene in downtown Atlanta Friday night. Officers out in full force as hundreds surrounded the streets. With a number of them climbing up on top of this tractor trailer, there's about three or four Atlanta police cars that are in the midst of all these people as well. In Chicago, activists carry out a die-in in front of President Obama's home, demanding he take more political action against police violence. So we're asking President Obama, we're asking you to move on this. Musicians and activists alike stepping up, asking for peace and denouncing the killings in Dallas. The attack on the officers was a cowardly and insane act of terrorism. It in no way represents anything about our long struggle for peace and justice for all. We are here to show love and support to the police force in Los Angeles and get some understanding and some communication. Demonstrations also making their way across the pond in London. Thousands marched in the name of the Black Lives Matter movement, holding signs and chanting in solidarity. And here locally in Fort Lauderdale, there will be a demonstration at 3 p.m. at Stranahan Park. You know, we will be there and bring that to you. Reporting live in Fort Lauderdale, Sonella Sibovic, Local 10 News. All right, Sonella, thank you. Meanwhile, support has been growing for the Dallas Police Department. A family in Texas say that they decided to take donuts to officers. They say when they were ordering the donuts, other people then joined in and helped buy more donuts. They posted these pictures on Instagram of them passing the donuts out with the hashtag Dallas Strong. And in a county about three hours south of Dallas, a young girl gave back to her local first responders. Seven-year-old Chloe Diaz offered free lemonade and free hugs to officers. Six deputies showed up to enjoy a cool drink in the summer heat and a hug. Deputies thanked her by letting her explore the inside of their patrol cars. I think they like the hug better than the lemonade. Our coverage, of course, of the Dallas police ambush continues. Look for more live reports from Local 10's Andrew Perez, live from Dallas, Texas, all weekend long. We're expecting to learn exactly what charge a father here at home is facing after the kidnapping of his three children when a report is released later today. Now, North Miami police confirmed that the father turned himself in last night. They say early in the day, he and his three children were forced out of their apartment by two men and driven to a bank on Biscayne Boulevard. When the father was unable to withdraw money, those men took off with the children inside the car. Investigators say the incident may be related to fraud between the parents and the abductors. There has to be some kind of connection as far as what the connection could be. We don't know. They're still investigating. The children, the oldest, just three years old, were dropped off and later picked up by their mother. The man believed to be behind a sickening crime is now behind bars. Police say this 23-year-old man, Devon Fuller, seen on surveillance video, was groping a blind woman at Broward College last month. The victim was using her walking cane when she approached an elevator and Fuller allegedly touched her inappropriately. Fuller is now facing multiple charges, including battery, stalking, and abusing a disabled adult. Records show he was already on probation for burglary. The algae alert still affecting the Treasure Coast. And now officials working on ways to stop the toxic bloom. Army engineers have already started reducing the flow of water from Lake Okeechobee, which is believed to be the source of that spread. The South Florida Water Management is now relying on public and private land to store the contaminated lake water. Officials are already noticing changes, they say. Some of our scientists were out in their boats yesterday 
in the estuary and all up and down the canal, and they they didn't see any visible algae on the main canal itself. That thick blue-green algae has been blanketing not only beaches, but waterways in Lee, St. Lucie, Martin, and Palm Beach County for weeks. The governor declared a state of emergency in affected areas. As we get closer to the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil's defense ministry is beefing up security for the event. As many as 2,500 army, soldier, and paratroopers have been stationed in to help with the security for the games in August. They will be helping the more than 60,000 local police in areas like airports, Olympic venues, and the city's main traffic routes. Though there is no known security threat at this point, officials say they are prepared for any possible scenario. You know that thing snakes on a plane? Yes. Oh, this woman, she's going through something just like that. She's afraid to sleep in her own home after it's taken over by some unwanted slippery visitors. Snakes in the home. Oh. Coming up, the slithering surprise she says keeps showing up at oh, night. My biggest nightmare. Todd Tonkin and Nikki Mohan on the one and only Local 10 News. A shocking discovery inside a Seminole County home. A woman says that snakes have invaded her apartment Ooh. after she found them coming out of her wall. 73-year-old Jan Perillo says that when she pulled up the corner of her carpet, 12 snakes came slithering out. Perillo says 12? she- 12? snakes, a dozen snakes. She contacted her apartment's management and they sent an exterminator, but she still believes more snakes are living inside her home. I just know I have to move. I'd like to get my stuff out of here because the longer it stays in here, I don't know where they're crawling. Perillo says in the meantime, she is paying for her own hotel until the problem is fixed. Three people are dead and more than 140 injured after Super Typhoon made landfall in Taiwan yesterday. That storm flipped cars, tore roofs off buildings, and dumped heavy rains across Taiwan. The typhoon battered the eastern coast for several hours before officially making landfall. 546, and let's get over to Jen. All right, uh, it is warm. <laughs> Once again, we're starting off with those temperatures in the low 80s right now for Lardo, Miami at 82 degrees, 84 Marathon, 83 in Key West, and even the 80s out west, where usually temperatures do end up dropping into those 70s. But so far, Homestead is at 80 degrees. Kendall right now not reporting their temperature. Meanwhile, uh, it's a calm wind in Fort Lardo and Miami. Elsewhere, winds out of the east, except for Homestead, it's actually a northwest wind. It's light, though, at five miles per hour. Hour. No rain on the radar as far as on land, just a few that are offshore over the Gulf of Mexico, and these continue to track towards the west, also dissipating, so not an impact for the Keys as of now. Hot and humid later on today as we continue with an east and southeast wind all across South Florida. There will be a few showers developing throughout tonight, most likely will impact the Keys and so southern portions of Miami-Dade, but this is going to be in the morning, early Sunday morning. And then for the rest of the afternoon, it's going to stay uh, mainly dry with a mix of sun and clouds and hot again. But rain chances are going up as we head towards the new week. And we'll take a look at that in the seven day. Meanwhile, UV index is extreme. Uh, the surf is smooth. It is flat, low, low rip current risk as well. And no advisories for boaters winds out of the south southeast. Five to ten knots seas, one to two feet. The base at a light shot. All right, temperatures expected to warm up to a high of 92 degrees for today, keeping that rain chance only at 20% for this Saturday and Sunday, bringing it up to 30%. That's because of those more the risk for morning showers. Then Monday, rain chances definitely go up, and it's going to be most likely in the afternoon. We'll, we'll see those showers and thunderstorms popping up. And then by Tuesday and Wednesday, that's when it goes up to 40%. And those are the two days we'll probably have the wettest uh, afternoons, followed by rain chances going down on Thursday. Well, the Miami Heat are making sure that Dwayne Wade is feeling the love before his big move to Chicago. Coming up in our morning sports wrap, how fans honored his legacy with their words and their wallets.
Happy weekend, everybody. I'm Clay Ferrero with your local 10 morning sports wrap. And this weekend is something of a farewell weekend for Dwayne Wade here in South Florida. Today he begins his annual skills camp for kids in Miami. And yesterday the Heat and their fans got their chance to say thank you with Dwayne Wade Day. The Heat playing Wade videos on American Airlines Arena all day long. They also sold all Wade merchandise for $13 in honor of his 13 years here in South Florida. And get this. They sold out everything before 3 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. Wade spoke out on Snapchat last night and said he actually saw much of this in person. It's been very busy, but I did. I was able to drive out of arena today and I seen all the fans out there showing love and everything the Miami Heat did. So I'm very thankful and appreciative, man, of, you know, of all the support that I've been feeling and seeing. This the full page ad that the Heat took out in local newspapers yesterday to say thank you to Dwayne Wade. The feeling not exactly the same in Chicago where Wade is of course going. This the front page of the Chicago Tribune with the caption plan AARP a clear cheap shot at Wade's age. This picture courtesy of Jason Leeser of the Palm Beach Post. Meanwhile, it appears the Heat are adding a former top draft pick to their roster. Derek Williams, who went second overall back in 2011, says on his Twitter account that he is joining Miami. Williams scored more than nine points a game last season for the New York Knicks. And the Heat may be close to bringing back one of their own. The Sun Sentinel reporting that Udonis Haslam is in advanced negotiations to come back to the team last night. To baseball, the Marlins and Reds on Jose Day at Marlins Park. Jose Fernandez on the mound, giving us a stare, and uh, he was really giving the Reds the business last night, striking out eight, no earned runs given up in seven innings of work. Then he gets the offensive help from Christian Yelich right here, just crushing that one out of the yard in center field. Fish winning this one by a final score of three to one. Also, look at that. You play well, you get a pie in the face. That's your reward. I don't know, not, not much of a reward. <laughs> That's your local 10 morning sports wrap. I'm Clay Ferrero. Rumors about one of the world's most notorious drug lord leading a politician to take to Twitter. Coming up, why a Mexican official tweeted out this picture of El Chapo. Welcome back. The convicted drug lord known as El Chapo is still in prison despite a rumor that he had escaped for a third time. And to prove it, a Mexican politician posted this picture. It shows Joaquin El Chapo Guzman sitting by himself in a maximum security prison west of Mexico City. The rumors of a third escape spread on social media as a result of a fictional article that was posted online earlier in the day. El Chapo is now awaiting deportation to the United States. Well, we are just getting started here on the Local 10 Weekend Morning News. That's right, folks. Here's a look at what we're working on for our next hour. The nation on high alert after a deadly police ambush in Dallas. We have latest details about the shooter, plus a look at protests around the country today. And a children's hospital evacuated after terrifying threats were made. What we now know about the SWAT situation there. And an on-campus assault caught on camera, a man allegedly targeting a disabled woman. The details on the disturbing investigation. Local 10 News at 6 is right around the corner. That's right, taking a live look dark and early out of our Fort Lauderdale Tower Cam. Jennifer will have a look at your full forecast when we come right back. Right now on Local 10 Morning News, the nation on high alert after that deadly police ambush in Dallas. New details emerging about the shooter. Hospital emergency, terrifying threats, causing a hospital full of children to go on lockdown, what caused police to bring in the SWAT team for a full sweep. An on-campus assault caught on camera, man allegedly targeting a blind woman. And a teen goes on a walk to test out a new very popular video game on her smartphone. Instead, she makes a deadly discovery. Live, the one and only Local 10 News starts right now. But first, we'd like to wish you a good Saturday morning, everyone, on this July 9th. I'm Nikki Mohan. And I'm Todd Tong. Good to have the band back together. I was off last week. Yeah, did you have a good patient. time? How was the weather in Montana? It was beautiful. You know, sunny yeah. and during it's the time day, of year cool to be at there. night. Yeah, it yeah, was gorgeous. You, you need to get a summer place so Jennifer and I can come visit out there. Well, right, you know Jen? what I did? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I picked me some huckleberries. You did? Oh. Yes. Yeah. They nice. only grow up in the mountains, about 3,000 feet, and they're I, delicious. Where are they? I, in Mont oh, I didn't bring any for you. I ate no. them all. Oh, okay. Jennifer. Do they taste good? I don't <laughs> yeah. even know how they look like. Oh, yeah. delicious. I'll bring you some. I jam. have to Google. We'll make some huckleberry pastelitos. <laughs>
actually, I, I need to bring Todd some croquetas. Yes. Because si. he didn't get any last time. See, si, see. Si. <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe I'll bring some tomorrow. Uh, for us in South Florida, we're starting to see just a little bit of light over the horizon. The sun will rise right around 635, 82 degrees in Miami, 81 Fort Lauderdale. And there are a few showers that are popping up this time south uh, and east of Marathon. So maybe Marathon could get a little bit of rain, but it's not a huge impact. Uh, most of the showers are too far offshore and eventually they're going to dissipate. 88 degrees by 10 a.m., partly cloudy and warm for the rest of the morning. Let's give you that quick look at the tropics. It is nice and quiet across uh, the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf and the Caribbean. We have that Bermuda high, a few tropical waves, but none of this expected to form into a tropical cyclone anytime soon. A peaceful protest against police brutality ending in what is now the deadliest attack on law enforcement since 9-11. Five officers killed by a sniper. People again taking to the streets last night with thousands rallying across the country. This morning, we are beginning to learn more about the heroic officers who lost their lives. We'll have more on those five officers in just a moment and the growing memorial in their honor. But first, we begin our coverage with Local 10 News reporter Larry Livingston, who is in our newsroom this morning with the very latest on the shooting and the ensuing investigation. Todd Nicky, the Dallas police chief, as well as the Dallas mayor say, despite questioning and holding a couple of suspects in the immediate moments following the shooting, they believe that this shooter who is now dead acted alone. And what started as a peaceful demonstration against police brutality ended in gunfire in a busy part of downtown Dallas. A total of 12 officers were shot. Five of them were killed. Two civilians were also shot and injured during that shooting. And police initially thought they were dealing with multiple snipers who took to higher ground, shooting those officers in the back at times. And as panic protesters ran away from those gunshots, officers rushed to the scene as the shooting continued Thursday night and eventually police cornered their suspect Micah Johnson in a nearby parking garage after hours of negotiation and more gunshots being exchanged. They used a bomb squad robot to deliver and detonate a device which ultimately killed Micah Johnson. And before he was killed by that explosive device, police say Johnson told them he was angry about Black Lives Matter and the deaths of black men in police involved shootings. He reportedly told police he wanted to kill white officers specifically and claimed he was not affiliated with any particular group. Now, Johnson was a private first class from Mesquite, that's a neighboring Dallas suburb, and he was an Army reservist for six years and received multiple medals after serving a nine month tour in Afghanistan. And the shooter's sister took to Facebook posting this. The news will say what they think, but those who knew him know this was not like him. Now, the Dallas police chief also vowed to exhaust any and all leads to make sure that everyone who played a part, who may have played a part in carrying this shooting out, is brought to justice. The chief also asked for prayers and for support for not just his department, but men and women in uniform across the country. For now, reporting live, Larry Livingston, Local 10 News. We now know the identities of the five officers killed in Wednesday's shooting rampage. Brent Thompson, Michael Kroll, Patrick Zamaripa, Mike Smith, and Lorne Ahrens. Those are the names of the officers. Investigators say the officers were patrolling that peaceful protest against police-involved shootings when those shots rang out. Zamaripa's father recalls how he found out that his son had died at the hospital. I was greeted by one of his partners that he graduated from in uh, there at the poli uh, police academy and I said how's Patrick doing he just looked at me and his face started turning red and I knew right there then I said no don't mm. tell me this don't tell me this and right there that's when I, I couldn't believe it I, just, I couldn't cry I just couldn't believe it Meanwhile, protesters across the country are condemning the violence in Dallas. In Atlanta, the demonstrators blocked a major highway, delaying traffic there. Just ahead, at 6.30, we'll have more on the nationwide protests scheduled to take place later today. And our coverage of the Dallas police ambush continues. Look for more reports, live reports, from Local 10's Andrew Perez just ahead at 9 a.m. A police officer in Georgia recovering this morning after being shot during an ambush. Authorities say Officer Randall Hancock was re responding to the call of a possible car break-in. They say when he got there, 22-year-old Stephen Paul Beck, who made the fake 911 call, shot him. Hancock did fire back. Both men were taken to the hospital. Hancock is listed in stable condition while Beck is in serious condition. A motive for that fake call and shooting still being investigated.
Well, following the police-involved death of Alton Sterling, the head of the NAACP flew to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to talk about moving forward. Cornell Brooks energized the crowd of hundreds with talk about stopping police brutality. The national civil rights leader was called in to help lead the rally for justice after the shooting death of Sterling. Officials have put up steel barricades around the Baton Rouge Police Headquarters in anticipation of more protests today. This comes as demonstrators stood outside the building yesterday, expressing outrage over this week's officer-involved shootings. There were also many protesters. Officials had to shut down roads because of them. We are now learning the names of the officers who performed the traffic stop that ended with the fatal shooting of Philando Castile. The two St. Anthony officers involved were Joseph Kauser and Geronimo Yanez, this shooting in Minnesota. Yanez pulled the trigger, opening fire on Castile multiple times, according to the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. Castile's girlfriend, meanwhile, captured the aftermath of that shooting on Facebook Live. It hurts me what's going on in Dallas because nobody should have to be taken away from their family. Reynolds says that she and Castile were pulled over for a busted taillight. She told reporters that Castile did only what the officer asked him to do. The trial continues for the police lieutenant charged in the Freddie Gray case in Baltimore. Lieutenant Brian Rice is the highest ranking of the six officers who were charged in Gray's death. He was one of the three bicycle officers who encountered Gray in April of last year, shortly after Gray suffered that final spinal cord injury while in police custody. Rice elected for a bench trial, meaning the verdict will be decided by a judge. A developing story this morning, a hospital emergency in Miami after a false bomb threat. Miami-Dade police had to be called into Nicholas Children's Hospital yesterday afternoon, and the hospital ended up being evacuated. There were also reports of an active shooter at that hospital, and police kept patients who were in critical condition inside with their doctors while snipers climbed up on the roof. A hospital spokeswoman later said that there was no shooting, and after several hours, investigators said they did not find a bomb either. As soon as we came out the elevator, we saw the police, and he was like, hey, you know, go this way. Everybody got to go this way. Thankfully, no injuries were reported, and the threat was officially deemed to be a false alarm. Two teens behind bars after an alleged string of robberies. Police say 19-year-old Henry Rodriguez and hid his face behind a bandana as he robbed at least four people on the street at gunpoint. He later jumped into a getaway car allegedly driven by 18-year-old Jose Suero. All of the robberies happened between Alton Road and Collins Avenue. The first was reported just after 1.30 in the morning, the last more than an hour later. One witness tells us he heard the victims scream for help. There was sugar. One was like falling in the floor, and the other one was like screaming. She was coming from there. Help, help, help. Both teens are charged with armed robbery. Rodriguez is also facing counts of burglary, petty theft, and grand theft. New this morning, a woman is recovering after she was bitten by an alligator and a big one in Seminole County. Fire rescue officials say the gator bit the woman on the arm as she was wading in a river. They say she is now in stable condition and is expected to survive. A trapper and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission say they did capture that alligator at the scene. One police officer dead and 25 injured following a grenade attack on a police station in Venezuela. Officials say two men on a motorcycle threw two grenades at police as the unit was gathering for their morning training session. One of the suspects was killed in a battle with officers after that attack, while another is still on the loose. Hundreds of state workers in Rio de Janeiro are protesting and saying that the authorities need to pay their salaries on time instead of spending funds on the Olympic Games. The governor has now declared a state of financial disaster. Public schools and university teachers marched this week to demand funding for health and education services. Now this comes as the country suffers its worst recession in decades, as well as a political corruption scandal involving their president. New overnight, we have a winner. Someone in Indiana hit that jackpot, my jackpot, in last night's $540 million Mega Million Lottery. The identity of the winner has yet to be released, but lottery officials say sales leading up to yesterday's drawing exceeded expectations. It was the 35th drawing since Mega Millions had a winner. That's their longest rollover stretch in their game's history. Well, a teenager going on a walk hoping to catch them all. 
you know, that's the catch saying for Pokemon. You say your kids play this game. It's a very popular game. You use your smartphone and its camera. Wow. But instead, she ends up making a deadly discovery. We're going to tell you what she stumbled on next. Also coming up, a plane taking a plunge and ending up in a fiery crash. The cell phone video that captured it all. You're watching Local 10 News with Todd Tongan and Nikki Mohan. Welcome back. An investigation is now underway after a woman in Wyoming, uh, Wyoming found a body by a river while playing the new popular app game called Pokemon Go. Now, in this game, players catch creatures in real life places with their f smartphone cameras. Now, the woman says she decided to go for a walk by the river to try and catch a water Pokemon. But instead, she found a body lying face down. I didn't know what to do. I was really scared. So I was like, I should just call 911. And I called 911, and then they told me to go wait up at the highway for a police officer. Now, officials say they believe the death to have been accidental. There was no evidence of foul play at that scene. They are now trying to determine the person's identity. Also caught on camera, a plane engulfed in flames after it crashed into a wooded area in Texas, killing four people on board. The aircraft was completely destroyed. According to the FAA, the plane had just taken off a few minutes earlier. Investigators believe it suffered some kind of engine failure. An eyewitness says he noticed that the plane was having trouble just after taking off. I saw it. I saw it. He went up. He made a left. And he went down. It hit the pine tree. The, the plane pretty much disintegrated. The NTSB and the FAA are both investigating the cause of this crash. In California, caught on camera, a fire sending a huge plume of black smoke into the sky there. That fire started yesterday afternoon. Wow, look at that. At this recycling center, police say nearby businesses were evacuated as firefighters from multiple departments worked to put it out. Officials say that fire thankfully is now contained and there were no reports of any injuries. In a Eureka, Kansas, cleanup underway after this tornado touched down there. And as you can see, demolishing homes and businesses. Officials say the tornado ripped through about 50 houses and businesses, including a nursing center. Luckily, there have been no reports of injuries. The National Weather Service says the tornado was an EF3, which carries winds up to 165 miles an hour. Good morning, South Florida. For us, we haven't been dealing with much in the uh, rainfall activity and thunderstorm activity, that is. And you know what? It's been nice, but it's actually pretty hot and to a point where we just want a shower to cool us off. And rain chances, by the way, do go up pretty soon. Not just yet, though. 81 degrees right now for you in Fort Lauderdale, 82 in Miami. But hey, we're dropping into those upper 70s from Palmetto Beach all the way down into Homestead. So finally, a little bit of a change there. Not a huge change. It's still warm. And uh, by the way, temperature in Marathon, it's quite warm this morning. 84 degrees there. Meanwhile, the winds are calming down for a lot of us. A very light in Homestead, by the way way almost calm and a five mile per hour wind speed in Key West. A few showers are popping up over the Florida Bay and south of the Middle Keys. They're tracking towards the West. So if these hold together right here, that will be an impact towards a marathon if it holds together. Again, these showers are really still pretty far out, but for the for now, it looks like most of us will be dry. The shower activity definitely will be an impact for the keys again if those showers hold together. There is still rain going on for New England. And by the way, this is all associated with a cold front that's going to spark the threat for severe weather, but it's going to be early today. And then once that front passes through, cooler, much cooler air will sweep across the northeast and parts of the Midwest as well. Also, there is a uh, rain going on across uh, portions of the mid Mississippi Valley, and that's associated with a front and a short wave as well. As you can see, slight rip current risk for the northern plains for the Dakotas, and then there's also slight severe risk of thunderstorms. This includes New Jersey, eastern PA and upstate New York, and that's how I mentioned that cold front, but this is going to be early in the day because today's forecast high for New York City is actually 75 degrees after reaching 90 the 90s just uh, yesterday and the day before. So much cooler weather is in store. This will continue to cool down through the weekend as far as the temperatures go across the northeast. Hot and humid for us, and that means highs are getting into those low 90s once again. By 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, we're hitting that high of 92 with 20% chance for a shower thunderstorm. The rain chance goes up, especially by 
next week on Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, thanks a lot, Jennifer. A father snooze under his son's bed going viral online. Coming up, we're hearing from the father himself on why he was caught sleeping on the floor under his son's hospital crib. But first, here's a look at your winning lottery numbers from overnight. Good luck, everyone. Always watching, always tracking. Meteorologist Jennifer Correa on the one and only Local 10 News, your weather authority. Welcome back from prescription pain medications to heroin. More than two and a half million Americans are suffering from some form of opiate addiction. When the user is a pregnant woman, the nightmare of addiction spirals into her unborn child. Local 10 medical specialist Christy Kruger looks at the struggle these babies then must go through and the efforts to get their moms off drugs. A baby's cry. It's always heartbreaking. But for infants born chemically addicted, it's a piercing plea of unspeakable pain. I've spoken to nurses in the neonatal ICU and they say like there's nothing that, that sound basically like haunts you in your dreams. And it's happening with frightening frequency. Basically you start people on a medication, they come in, maybe my knee's hurting or I had a small injury, you start them on something and then they get addicted to it. And so the, and that addiction doesn't go away when the prescription runs out, people end up buying these medications off the street or switching to heroin, which is a lot of what we're seeing in South Florida. Addicted infants need to be isolated and treated with morphine as they slowly go through weeks of detox that may be followed by lifelong difficulties. Sometimes even developmental delays, educational delays related to the substance exposure while, while the mom is pregnant. But Memorial Healthcare System is one of just a few in the nation now to have a program that helps pregnant women safely detox. They can't stop using while they're pregnant. Um, they could uh, spontaneously abort, they could lose the baby. After being turned away several times, Sarah Livermore finally found her way to Memorial and got off her addiction to heroin. You know, they saved me right in the nick of time, and of course my child, you know, he doesn't have to be born um, in pain and suffering for my mistakes, you know. So we both got a second chance, and it's, it's a wonderful thing. New research shows that women who are addicted to opiates can be successfully treated with a drug called buprenorphine, which also reduces the risk of withdrawal for their babies, as well as those painful complications that go along with that. With a special health report, I'm Christy Krueger, Local 10 News. Happening today, get out your flip-flops and your bathing suit, and you can take the family to Splash Day. It's happening at the Gold Coast Railroad Museum in Miami. Treat your kids to water slides, food, bounce houses, and so much more. That event starts at 11, it goes until four. It costs eight bucks for non-members, $5 for museum members. It's family day on Aragon at the Coral Gables Art Muse Cinema. The event happens every other weekend. They plan to play classic films for the entire family. Today's movie is Babe, Pig in the City. It starts at 11, tickets are $5. It includes a free popcorn and soda, and that's a deal. You could also spend your day by helping our environment by cleaning up a beach. Need volunteer hours? This is your day. The Hollywood Beach Sweep Cleanup is happening today from 7 a.m. to 11. Volunteers must be at least eight to participate. You have to register for the cleanup at hollywoodfl.org. Make sure and dress appropriately, wear sunscreen, carry a hat, lots of water. Well, a dad in Pennsylvania proves that his job as a father, it is never done. After a picture of him curled up on the hospital floor underneath his son's crib went viral. That's right. It's really adorable. The picture of Andre Palmer shows him sleeping under his son's hospital crib. He had just gotten off of a nine hour overnight shift and rushed to the hospital to see his son who suffers from really bad asthma. He says when he got there, everyone was already asleep. I was like, you know what? They're asleep. I'm not going to ask her to try to move over a little bit. I just woke up and looked and I was like, oh my gosh, that's a perfect photo to me. It's a picture of me being a father. That's right. Andre's wife says she didn't leave him on the floor for too long. The son has since been discharged and everyone is back home. I know. It looks pretty comfy there. Yeah. After Good. the break, folks, we're going to have a look at the protests around the country in the wake of that deadly day in Dallas. And what is being planned here locally for today as well. Plus, an arrest made after a blind woman is groped. We'll have the very latest on this extremely disturbing investigation. Take Local 10 online with you wherever you're headed.
Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest social media news and interaction. Local 10 News starts right now. Time now, 629, 82 degrees. The sun is up, taking a live look at the Magic City out of our Miami Tower Cam. Nice, hazy, lazy Saturday morning. Hopefully you're able to sleep in a little bit. If not, you got to get up and go to work like us, you know. We'll find a reason to smile about it. That's we right. always do. And Jennifer always makes us smile. She's got, she's always mm -hmm. sunshine and flowers and she's at the beach. <laughs> the I'm cleanup the beach. crew is just finishing up, uh, looks like cleaning up the boardwalk. Yeah, at the, yeah, the Broadwalk is actually pretty empty. I always see a lot more people walking out. I guess, yeah, it is a lazy Saturday, but hey, you want to head out for your morning jog, you must head out early because it's going to be so hot. Uh, by noon hour, temperatures getting to at least 91 degrees out there, so make sure uh, to get that exercise in earlier or then later on in the evening. Otherwise, it is nice and smooth. Check out that water. That rip current risk is slow. The surf is flat and temperatures starting off in those low 80s right along the coast for us. By the way, for the Keys, there are a few showers that are basically popping up offshore. They're just surrounding the Keys. To take a look at that. Isla Mirada not really seeing any rain, but these showers are surrounding you. And then there's a shower right here. This could be an impact for Marathon as I'll continue to track that. Hopefully, eventually it just dissipates. But these are quick movers, so they won't last long. And temperatures expected to warm up rapidly by 10 a.m. 88 degrees, hitting 90 degrees by around 11 a.m. So very warm for the start of our Saturday. All right, let's give you a quick look at the tropics and uh, we are not concerned with any tropical formation in the next few days. A peaceful protest against police brutality ending in what is now the deadliest attack on law enforcement since 9-11. Five officers killed all by a sniper. People again taking to the streets last night with thousands rallying across our country. This morning, we are beginning to learn more about the heroic officers who lost their lives. Well, after the hour-long standoff with police, the man believed to be behind the shooting spree was killed. And we are learning more about what could have been motivated that attack. We begin our team coverage with Local 10 News reporter Larry Livingston in our newsroom with the very latest on the shooting and the investigation. Larry. Todd, Nikki, at least three suspects were detained and questioned following this shooting and they were later released. And police now say that the shooter that is now dead acted alone, but they are determined to exhaust any and all leads to make sure that anyone who may have helped him carry out this shooting is brought to justice if that person or those people are out there somewhere. I pray that these senseless acts are, are stopped. A salute to the five officers who ran toward the gunfire and the chaos in downtown Dallas Thursday night. 43-year-old Dallas Transit Officer Brent Thompson was the first name we learned, a newlywed, Sergeant Michael Smith, Officer Patrick Zamarapa, a father and a veteran of three tours in Iraq, Officer Lorne Ahrens and Officer Michael Kroll, all of them killed after what began as a peaceful protest against police brutality following the police-involved shooting deaths of black men in Louisiana and Minnesota. Police say the Dallas officers were targeted because of the color of their skin and their uniform. He said he was upset about the recent police shootings. The suspect stated he wanted to kill white people, especially white officers. The shooter, 25-year-old Micah Johnson. The former Army Reservist had no criminal history, no ties to foreign terror groups. Inside his home, though, an arsenal of bomb-making materials, weapons, and ammo. Authorities say the investigation is just beginning. What we don't know is who, if anybody, uh, may have known what the gunman knew, what he was going to do, uh, may have assisted him. Twelve officers were shot, including the five who were killed. Two civilians were also hurt. Police initially thought they were dealing with multiple snipers who took to higher ground to pick off those police officers, shooting them in the back many times. Panicked protesters ran away as officers rushed to the scene during the ongoing gun battle Thursday night. Eventually, police cornered their one suspect in a nearby parking garage. After hours of negotiation and gunfire, they used a bomb squad robot to deliver and detonate a device which ultimately killed him. 
and the Dallas police chief says many of the injured officers have been released from the hospital. Those seven injured officers and the two civilians who were shot are expected to fully recover from their injuries. For now, reporting live here in Livingston, Local 10 News. We are learning about the death of this Dallas sniper who police say shot and killed five officers on Thursday. Police used a bomb robot like this one to deliver a, and detonate an explosive which killed Micah Xavier Johnson. Police said it was necessary to send in that robot after hours of negotiations failed with Johnson. Even with the tragic shootings in Dallas, members of the Black Lives Matter movement took to the streets last night to continue their protests. And although they were mostly peaceful, there was still tension in the air. Local 10 News reporter Sanella Sabove continues our live team coverage from Fort Lauderdale. Sanella. Good morning, Nikki and Todd. It's been a sad, tragic week. And in light of the latest chain of events, citizens across the United States took to the streets and mostly what were peaceful protests to denounce the latest rash of violence. People across the country making their voices heard after another mass shooting grips the nation. In just one week, three separate tragedies, two officer-involved shootings in Louisiana and Minnesota, and just yesterday, five officers slain in Dallas. What do we want? Justice! What do we Citizens want? taking to the streets across the nation to express their grievances. This was the scene in downtown Atlanta Friday night. Officers out in full force as hundreds surrounded the streets. With a number of them climbing up on top of this tractor trailer, there's about three or four Atlanta police cars that are in the midst of all these people as well. In Chicago, activists carry out a die-in in front of President Obama's home, demanding he take more political action against police violence. So we're asking President Obama, we're asking you to move on this. Musicians and activists alike stepping up, asking for peace and denouncing the killings in Dallas. The attack on the officers was a cowardly and insane act of terrorism that in no way represents anything about our long struggle for peace and justice for all. We are here to show love and support to the police force in Los Angeles and get some understanding and some communication. Demonstrations also making their way across the pond in London. Thousands marched in the name of the Black Lives Matter movement, holding signs and chanting in solidarity. And here locally, there will be a rally at Stranahan Park. Hundreds are expected to attend. It's supposed to begin at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And the Fort Lauderdale Police Chief, Frank Adderley, he released a statement yesterday saying that his department is aware and they've taken all the necessary steps to ensure that everything goes off without a hitch. Reporting live in Fort Lauderdale, Sanella Sabovic, Local 10 News. Thank you, Snella. Meanwhile, support has been growing for the Dallas Police Department, many rallying to shower officers with kindness. A family in Texas say they decided to take donuts to officers. They say when they were ordering those donuts, though, other people joined in and helped buy more donuts. They posted these pictures on Instagram of them passing out donuts with the hashtag Dallas Strong. And in a county about three hours just south of Dallas, a young girl gave back to her local res first responders. Her name is uh, Chloe Diaz. She's seven years old, and she offered free lemonade and free hugs to officers. Six deputies showed up to enjoy a cool drink and get a hug. Deputies thank Chloe by letting her check out the inside of their, her, their patrol cars. Our co uh, coverage of the Dallas police ambush continues. Look for more live reports from Local 10's Andrew Perez. He is live from Dallas all weekend long, beginning at 9 a.m. Today we're expecting to learn exactly what charge a father will face after allegedly kidnapping his three children. When a report is released later today, North Miami police confirmed that the father turned himself in last night. They say earlier in the day he and his three children were forced out of their apartment by two men and driven to a bank on Biscayne Boulevard. When the father was unable to withdraw money, the men took off with the children inside the car. Investigators say the incident might be related to fraud between the parents and the abductors. There has to be some kind of connection as far as what the connection could be. We don't know. They're still investigating. Those children, the oldest, just three years old, were dropped off and later picked up by their mom. The man believed to be behind a sickening crime is now behind bars. Police say this is 23-year-old Devon Fuller. He's seen here on surveillance video actually groping a blind woman at Broward College last month. The victim was using her walking cane when she was approached by, and Fuller allegedly touched her inappropriately. Fuller is now facing multiple charges, including battery, stalking, and abusing a disabled adult. Records show he was already on probation for burglary.
And algae alerts still affecting folks in the Treasure Coast. And now officials are working on ways to stop that toxic bloom. Now, Army engineers say they've already started reducing the flow of water from Lake Okeechobee, which is believed to be the source of that spread. The South Florida Water Management now relying on public and private land to store the contaminated lake water. Officials say they're already noticing changes. Some of our scientists were out in their boats yesterday in the estuary and all up and down the canal and they they didn't see any visible algae on the main canal itself. Thick blue-green algae has been blanketing not only beaches, but also waterways in Lee, St. Lucie, Martin, and Palm Beach counties for weeks. The governor officially declared a state of emergency in those affected areas. Well, as we get closer to the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, de Janeiro Brazil's defense ministry is beefing up security for the event. As many as 2,500 army soldiers and paratroopers have been stationed there to help with security for the Games in August. They will be helping more than 60,000 local police agencies in areas like airports, Olympic venues, and the city's main traffic routes. A woman afraid to sleep in her own home after being, it's been overtaken by some unwanted visitor. She had to move to a hotel. Don't blame her. Coming up, the slithering surprise she says keeps showing up at Whoa. night. Todd Tonkin and Nikki Mohan on the one and only Local 10 News. A shocking discovery inside a Seminole County home. A woman says that snakes have invaded her apartment after she found them coming out of her wall. 73-year-old Jan Perillo says when she pulled up the corner of her carpet, 12 snakes came slithering out. <laughs> Perillo says she contacted her apartment's management company. They sent an exterminator in, but she says she still believes more snakes are living inside the home. I just know I have to move. I'd like to get my stuff out of here because the longer it stays in here, I don't know where they're crawling. Perillo says in the meantime, she is now paying for her own hotel until that problem is completely fixed. She's gonna move out. Now, I don't know what I would tell the insurance company, but I would light the wall on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I would burn the wall down. Probably not the solution. <laughs> but I think they would cover the fire versus covering the snakes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't advise That's that. That's one this way is, to look at it. This is not official advice. I yes. just, I can wrestle one python, yeah. not 12. It's Nikki Mohan, not all state. You're <laughs> not in good hands, okay? So let's get over to one of the forecasts with Jennifer Correa, where you are in good hands. Oh, I hate it. Yes. I, I like snakes, but it's creepy. I mean, imagine sleeping. Oh, and that thing crawls in your mouth. Oh, my God. That's scary. That's scary. That's my fear. Anyways, at least uh, hopefully we never have that problem. Uh, but uh, by the way, a big problem that has been with the weather is the heat. And it does become a problem because it is so hot out there. A lot of us are out and about and having some fun outside on the beach or maybe just uh, doing the yard work and then we don't drink water and then we get heat exhaustion. So make sure you're hydrating yourself. And these days, uh, these steamy days, summer days will continue on at least through the rest of the weekend. Then we're going to start to see a little bit of a change next week. And that means in the form of rain. We do need the rain to cool us off, but not much in store for us today. Temperatures starting off in the upper 70s, low 80s. Winds are calm or light. Now there are a few showers, as you can see, developing in and around the Keys. But so far, they're offshore. They're just surrounding the land. And uh, in the meantime, no one's really seen rain. But some of those could sneak in into Marathon and the Upper Keys as well. Hot and humid for today will continue with an east and southeast wind through tomorrow. Few morning showers for Sunday and then staying mainly dry, especially right along southeast Florida. So if you're heading out to the beach today, UV index is, of course, extreme. We're expecting lots of sunshine. The winds out of the south southeast, 5 to 10 miles per hour. That surf is flat. The rip current risk is also low and no advisories for boaters. Your seas one to two feet. The bays with a light shot. Highs today getting up to 92 degrees and we'll start to hit that right around 2 and 3 o'clock with only a 20% chance for a shower or inland thunderstorm. Otherwise, it's a hot afternoon, hot again tomorrow. Remember, the heat index is supposed to rise to the triple digits today and tomorrow. Then we'll see more in the form of rain, especially by Tuesday and Wednesday.
Well, the Miami Heat are making sure that Dwayne Wade is feeling the love. Can you feel the heat right in your soul? <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. He's making that big move to Chicago, but we're sending him we're off in style. We're going to miss him. Coming up in our morning sports wrap, how fans honored his legacy with their words and their wallets. Happy weekend, everybody. I'm Clay Ferrero with your Local 10 Morning Sports Wrap. And this weekend is something of a farewell weekend for Dwayne Wade here in South Florida. Today, he begins his annual skills camp for kids in Miami. And yesterday, the Heat and their fans got their chance to say thank you with Dwayne Wade Day. The Heat playing Wade videos on American Airlines Arena all day long. They also sold all Wade merchandise for $13 in honor of his 13 years here in South Florida. And get this. They sold out everything before 3 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. Wade spoke out on Snapchat last night and said he actually saw much of this in person. It's been very busy, but I did. I was able to drive out of the arena today and I've seen all the fans out there showing love and everything that Miami Heat did. So I'm very thankful and appreciative, man, of, you know, of all the support that I've been feeling and seeing. This the full page ad that the Heat took out in local newspapers yesterday to say thank you to Dwayne Wade. The feeling not exactly the same in Chicago where Wade is of course going. This the front page of the Chicago Tribune with the caption plan AARP a clear cheap shot at Wade's age. This picture courtesy of Jason Leeser of the Palm Beach Post. Meanwhile, it appears the Heat are adding a former top draft pick to their roster. Derek Williams, who went second overall back in 2011, says on his Twitter account that he is joining Miami. Williams scored more than nine points a game last season for the New York Knicks. And the Heat may be close to bringing back one of their own. The Sun Sentinel reporting that Udonis Haslam is in advanced negotiations to come back to the team last night. To baseball, the Marlins and Reds on Jose Day at Marlins Park. Jose Fernandez on the mound, giving us a stare, and uh, he was really giving the Reds the business last night, striking out eight, no earned runs given up in seven innings of work. Then he gets the offensive help from Christian Yelich right here, just crushing that one out of the yard in center field. Fish winning this one by a final score of 3-1. to one. Also, look at that. You play well, you get a pie in the face. That's your reward. I don't know, not, not much of a reward. <laughs> That's your local 10 morning sports wrap. I'm Clay Ferrero. Mmm, pie. Thanks, Clay. Rumors about one of the world's most notorious drug lords leading one Mexican politician to take to Twitter. Coming up, why he tweeted out this picture of El Chapo. The convicted drug lord known as El Chapo Guzman is still in prison despite a rumor that he had escaped for a third time. To prove it, a Mexican politician posted this picture. It shows Joaquin El Chapo Guzman sitting by himself in a maximum security prison west of Mexico City. The rumors of a third escape spread on social media as a result of a fictional article that was posted online earlier in the day. El Chapo is waiting deportation here to the U.S. We have an awful lot of news to get to this morning. That's right, folks, still to come. Here's a look at what we're working on for our next hour. We continue to learn more about the deadly Dallas police ambush, five officers killed in the line of duty, as investigators continue their probe into the gunman. Plus, a father turning himself in after his three young children were kidnapped. This morning, we're waiting to hear what charge he could be facing. And caught on camera, a gas station comes crashing down. What investigators say happened that led to this chaotic collapse. Local 10 News at 7 is next. Another check of your forecast right after the break. Taking a live oh, look, look out that. of our Miami Tower Camp. As the sun comes up over the Magic City, we got bright sunshine. We got a few clouds. What's going on? Jennifer will have your forecast after our break. Right now on Local 10 News at 7 a.m., the country united in mourning after the deadly Dallas shootings. This time, police are uh, this time targeting police officers in Dallas. This morning, we are learning more about the victims and the gunmen. And protests popping up all around the country in the aftermath of the violence involving police. A rally planned for today, right here in South Florida. Here at home, scary moments after an emergency evacuation at a South Florida Children's Hospital. What led to a full police presence, including SWAT? And an on-campus assault caught on camera. A man accused of groping a disabled woman at Broward College, and it's not his first brush with the law. Live.
The one and only Local 10 News starts right now. Good Saturday morning, everyone. I'm Nikki Mohan. And I'm Tom Tonga. We want to thank you for waking up with us on this Saturday, July 9th. Of course, everybody wants to know how the weekend's going to be. We're going to follow it up with another hot and steamy one. My I guess know. is yes. Um, last night, it was 80 degrees around my house. I said, this is perfect if it was only in the middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Well, no, it's going to be much warmer than that by the middle of the afternoon. Todd and Nikki. And right now, though, it's a quiet start for all of South Florida. And this is a live view at a Mount Sinai Medical Center tower cabin. It looks really nice, actually. A little bit of a haze, but still very nice. And a few clouds in the distance over the Atlantic Ocean. Otherwise, a lot of sunshine over Hollywood Beach as those winds have calmed down at Hollywood Beach. Just a light breeze for Fort Lauderdale, three miles per hour, 81 degrees, 79 degrees in Miami. Now there are a few showers popping up in and around the Keys. A few of these showers could make impact for the Upper Keys. Then we have two that are actually already looks like they're going to make landfall anytime soon in Marathon, but they're small and quick movers as well. They continue to track towards the west. Temperatures expected to warm up close to 90 degrees by 11 a.m. Let's give you that quick look at the tropics and across the Atlantic Ocean. We're not concerned with any tropical formation in the next few days. Nikki. Thanks a lot, Jennifer. We continue to learn new details about that deadly police ambush in Dallas. The violence came in the lives of five law enforcement officers. The shooting started with a peaceful protest, and last night we saw more of the same all around the country. Outspoken activists taking to the streets to condemn the violence. We continue to learn more information about the officers who were killed. And this morning, investigators continue their probe into the gunman as the city of Dallas and the country as a whole are united in mourning. Local 10 News reporter Laren Livingston kicks off our team coverage. He's following the very latest in our newsroom. Laren. Nikki Todd, the Dallas police chief and the mayor say despite holding, questioning and later releasing a couple of suspects after this shooting, they believe that this shooter that is now dead acted alone. Now, what started as a peaceful demonstration against police brutality ended, unfortunately, in gunfire in a very busy part of downtown Dallas. A total of 12 officers were shot, five of them killed. Two civilians were also shot and injured during those gunshots and police initially thought they were dealing with multiple snipers who took to higher ground shooting those officers in the back at times and as panic protesters ran away officers rushed to this scene as the shooting and the bullets and barrage of gunfire continued thursday night eventually police cornered their suspect micah johnson in a nearby parking garage after hours of negotiation and more gunshots they used a bomb squad robot to detonate a device which ultimately killed their suspect and as soon as they could get inside, authorities were searching the gunman's home, and that's where they found an arsenal of ammo. They found weapons, a bulletproof vest, and bomb-making materials. We've learned Micah Johnson was a private first class from Mesquite. That's a neighboring Dallas suburb. He was an Army reservist for six years and received multiple medals after serving a nine-month tour in Afghanistan. And we've also learned what reportedly motivated him to carry out this attack. He said he was upset about the recent police shootings. The suspect said he was upset at white people. The suspect stated he wanted to kill white people, especially white officers. And the Dallas chief you just heard from there, him there, G Chief David Brown, he says that many of the injured officers have since been released from the hospital. That's some good news here. And those seven officers, as well as the two civilians who were shot, are expected to make full recoveries. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you the latest here on Local 10 at Local10.com. For now, we're putting live there in Livingston, Local 10 News. We now know the identities of the five officers killed in Wednesday's shooting rampage. Brent Thompson, Patrick Kroll, Patrick Zamaripa, Mike Smith and Lauren Ahrens were officers that were killed, and, and investigators say that the officers were all patrolling the peaceful protest against police-involved shootings when those shots rang out. Most importantly, today, on this day, and in the coming days, the primary message is one word, and that is unity. Our coverage of the Dallas police ambush continues. Look for more reports, including a live one from Local 10's Andrew Perez, who is in Dallas all weekend long. 
A police officer in Georgia is now recovering this morning after being shot during an ambush. Authorities say Officer Randall Hancock was responding to a call of a possible car break in. But they say when he got there, 22 year old Stephen Paul Beck, who actually made that fake 911 call, shot Hancock. Hancock fired back. Both men were taken to the hospital. Hancock is in stable condition, Beck in serious condition. The motive for the shooting is still under investigation. In Louisiana, following the police-involved death of Alton Sterling, the head of the NAACP, flew to Baton Rouge to talk about moving forward. Cornell Brooks energized the crowd of hundreds gathered with talk about stopping police brutality. The national civil rights leader was called in to help lead the rally for justice after the shooting death of Alton Sterling. Officials have put up steel barricades around the Baton Rouge Police Department headquarters in anticipation of more protests today. This comes as demonstrators stood outside the building yesterday expressing outrage over this week's officer-involved shootings. There were so many protesters, they had to shut down the streets. And in Minnesota, we are now learning the names of the officers who performed the traffic stop that ended with the fatal shooting of Philando Castile. The two St. Anthony officers involved were Joseph Krauser and Geronimo Yanez. Yanez is the officer that pulled the trigger, opening fire in Castile multiple times. According to the Minnesota Beauty Bureau rather, of Criminal in Apprehension, Castile's girlfriend captured the aftermath of the shooting on Facebook Live. It hurts me what's going on in Dallas because nobody should have to be taken away from their family. Reynolds says she and Castile were pulled over for a busted taillight. She told officers that Castile only did what officer, the officer asked him to do. The trial continues for the police lieutenant charged in the Freddie Gray case in Baltimore. Lieutenant Brian Rice is the highest ranking of the six officers who were charged in Gray's death. He was one of the three bicycle officers who encountered Gray in April of last year. Shortly after, Gray suffered a final fatal spinal cord injury while in police custody. Rice elected for a bench trial, meaning that the verdict will be decided by a judge. Developing right now a hospital emergency in Miami after a false bomb threat. This was developing yesterday afternoon. Miami-Dade police were called to Nicholas Children's Hospital yesterday, and the hospital ended up being evacuated. And there were also very scary reports at the time of an active shooter, possibly at the hospital. Police kept the patients who were in critical condition inside with their doctors while they put snipers on the roof. A hospital spokeswoman later said that there was no shooting, and after several hours of searching, investigators say they did not find any explosive materials. As soon as we came out the elevator, we saw the police, and he was like, hey, you know, go this way. Everybody got to go this way. No injuries were reported, and that threat was officially deemed to be a false alarm. Central Florida Congresswoman Corrine Brown has faced a judge for the first time after being indicted on 24 charges of fraud and conspiracy. Brown insists she is innocent. The 52-page indictment alleges Brown and her chief of staff took advantage of constituents by soliciting donations for a fake charity. My heart is just really heavy. Uh, this has been a very difficult time for me, my family, my constituents. Brown is scheduled to be back in court in September. Two teens are behind bars after an alleged string of robberies. Police say they are 19-year-old Henry Rodriguez, he hid his face behind a bandana as he robbed at least four people on the street at gunpoint. He later jumped into a getaway car that was driven by the other teenager, 18-year-old Jose Suero. All of the robberies happened between Alton Road and Collins Avenue at Miami Beach. The first was reported just after 1.30 in the morning, the last more than an hour later. A witness tells us that he heard those victims screaming for help. There was sugar. One was like falling in the floor. In the floor. And the other one was like screaming. She was coming from there. Help, help, help. Both teens are charged with armed robbery. Rodriguez is also facing counts of burglary, petty theft, and grand theft. Health officials in Utah have reported the first Zika virus-related death in the United States. Doctors there say the elderly patient had traveled to an undisclosed destination where the virus is circulating. They say that although the cause of death has not been determined, the patient had an underlying medical condition and had tested positive for Zika. 
U.S. Open champion Dustin Johnson has withdrawn from the Rio Olympic Games over Zika virus concerns. Of the top four golfers in the world, Johnson is the third to withdraw from the Olympics. In a statement, Johnson said the decision was not an easy one, but he said his concerns about the Zika virus can't be ignored. Until this year, golf had been absent from the Olympics since 1904. New overnight, we've got a winner. That's right, someone in Indiana, unfortunately, hit the jackpot last night in the $540 million Mega Million Lottery. The identity of the winner has not yet been released, but lottery officials say sales leading up to yesterday's drawing exceeded expectations. This was the 35th drawing since Mega Millions has started, it, and uh, it, the, is, this is the longest rollover stretch in the game's history and the biggest winner. Still ahead, a fast-moving fire caught on camera. What led the flames? That what led to the flames, rather, that sent this huge plume of black smoke into the sky. Plus, drivers in Michigan will need to look elsewhere for gas after this gas station came crashing down. We're going to tell you what led to the collapse. And this is a nice view out of Miami's tower cam. We have a few clouds rolling on shore, a little bit of a haze because of that steaminess, that humidity. Uh, and by the way, it's going to be hot later this afternoon, but we do have an end to this hot streak. All those details with your seven day forecast when we return. You're watching Local 10 News with Todd Tongan and Nikki Mohan. Caught on camera, a fire in Northern California sending a huge plume of black smoke into the sky. The fire started yesterday afternoon at a recycling center. Police say nearby businesses were evacuated as firefighters from multiple departments worked to put out that fire. Officials say the fire is now contained and there were no reports of any injuries. Also caught on camera, a plane engulfed in flames after it crashed into a wooded area in Texas and it killed all four people on board. The aircraft was completely destroyed. According to the FAA, the plane had just taken off a few minutes earlier. Investigators believe that it suffered some sort of engine failure, but the NTSB and FAA are now investigating the cause of the crash. Intense storms caused major damage in parts of Detroit, including a gas station where the winds were brought down. Um, the winds brought down a lot, including a canopy of this gas station on the five cars. The cars were crushed and the people inside were trapped for a little bit. The witnesses did help pull people out of their mangled cars. Thankfully, everyone did walk away unharmed. You know, Nick, you, scary, though. you were saying that this is it this month is spa month. Yeah, Miami spa month. Yeah. Why would they pick this month? I just walk out the door and I get a nice steam <laughs> and put a few cucumbers on my eyes and lay out by the pool. Right. Done. Yeah, yeah facial right. right there. Don't need it. It's free. Bam, boom. Boom. <laughs> it, it does feel like a, a sauna. Actually, I feel like you can cut through this humidity. It is so thick out there and it's causing a bit of a haze for us this morning. As you can see, actually, it's been doing that the past couple of days. Now we have a few clouds right along the coast, so more cloudiness uh, towards the west side of South Florida. But either way, it is still dry for Brown and Miami Dade. The Keys, you're seeing a few showers around the area. Meanwhile, the temperature is still in the low 80s for Fort Lauderdale, Miami you managed to drop to 79 degrees. Hey, the upper 70s, that's a bit cooler. <laughs> Not so much, though, because high humidity makes us feel much warmer out there. Now, the wind is calm in Miami. Meanwhile, a light breeze out of the east for Marathon. Marathon seeing a little bit of rain due to the shower activity. As you can see, these are tracking towards the west, so there are a cluster of showers that are moving through parts of the Middle Keys. The Upper Keys, those showers that are popping up over the Florida Bay, they will continue to track towards the west and away from you. Meanwhile, uh, for the rest of today, it's another hot one for us and of course humid. Now this hot weather pattern is expected to come to an end, which means it's not going to completely cool down, but at least that heat index won't be so high in the triple digits like we've been having. We do expect that, however, today and tomorrow. Now tomorrow with a few morning showers and then dry again, especially along the East Coast. So if you're heading out to the beach today, very important to take that huge bucket of ice water with you. Keep yourself hydrated and also take the sunscreen, use it, reapply it. UV index will be extreme. No advisories for boaters out there. Great day to head out and do some fishing, but of course a lot of sunshine out there. Now seas one to two feet the base with the light shop today, so it is quiet. Highs today getting up to 92 degrees. We'll hit that right around two and three o'clock as those rain chances stay low only between 10 to 20 percent this afternoon. Rain chance goes up to 30 percent because of the risk of more showers tomorrow morning and then 
it goes up even higher, especially on Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, with the better chance for showers and storms in the afternoon, temperatures won't be as hot. The heat index won't rise to the triple digits by then. So that's when we're going to start to see those changes. Todd. Thank you, Jennifer. An investigator investigation rather is underway after a woman in Wyoming found a body by a river while playing that new popular app uh, game called Pokemon Go. Now in the game, players catch creatures in real life places with their phones cameras. So the woman says she decided to go for a walk by the river to try and find a water Pokemon. Instead, they he found she found a body lying face down. I didn't know what to do. I was really scared. So I was like, I should just call 911. And I called 911, and then they told me to go wait up at the highway for a police officer. Officials say they believe the death.